Welcome back to Satisfactory Update 6. My name is Niklaus and I will be your guide on this Let's Play and tutorial. We have big plans today for designs and construction and expansion of the base and what could possibly go wrong. Thank you. Fuse broken. And that is the topic of today. So, what happened now? We have uh, apparently a overconsumption and somehow we our entire power network shut down. So, this episode will be about finding the causes for why it's shut down, looking at complications for why it's not just easy as flipping the switch, fixing the actual issue and getting back online, which is the hardest part of uh, getting your entire factory back online. And then of course, some follow-ups on tips, tricks and good ideas. So sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. Maybe you've never had this issue and then just consider it entertainment. Maybe you've had this issue and spent a lot of time trying to figure it out and maybe this will be useful. I learned a few things as this happened uh, to me. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to uh, progress and show it on to you as well. The first thing is, of course, how about just flipping the switch again? Maybe it was just a broken fuse. Yeah, that never works. Almost never works. And here is the one thing that is, uh, is important to note is that this spike up here is actually usually higher than what you were seeing before. You can see that the spikes up here to 6,400 megawatt while I was only consuming 6,100 here. So that's something we'll come back to. But the issue is that almost it's almost never possible to just flip the switch. So you're gonna have to do something else. The first thing we need to do is look at the causes. Why did this happen in the first place? And what can we do with it? The usual place, I would say, a usual case, at least for me, is the fact that I have just uh, expanded my factory and not cared about making sure that we actually add more power. So what I've done is I made a power plant here. This is 2,400 megawatts of coal power. It's on this playlist. Then after that, a bit uh, when we turned that, that turned out not to be enough. We built over here, we built the uh, 3,600 megawatts of power for the fuel generators, all idle now, and um, down here as well. And that is our power at this moment. So that gives us about 6,000 megawatts of power for the base. But um, if it shuts down, because I'm using more than 6,000, as we could see, let's uh, jump down to a location. Uh, why do we not have anywhere that we can... Oh, there we go. There must be a power pole down here somewhere. Usually a power pole next to this. So as we can look at this location, we are now consuming generally more than 6,000. So even if you have batteries, and I do have batteries, let's have a look at the battery farm that I have. There over there, there's a battery farm. So even if you have the batteries, that just means that when you're consuming more than you're building, it'll just slowly start decreasing. And if you uh, forget it for extended periods of time, well, you have no power left in the batteries. Obviously, when they start discharging, you should be uh, working on uh, on making some more power. Uh, that is so basically it's either your factory is just consuming too much or the batteries died, which is kind of the same thing. Uh, it could be one of your uh, your power plants that has shut down, which is also the case here for me. So let's have a look at uh, that particular case as well. So here we have the coal power and uh, we have full water, full water, full belt, full water. That's all good. What about upstairs for the second tier? Full water, empty water. So there is actually a problem back in my base that one of these is uh, not doing enough. And uh, as you can see here, we also have our maximum consumption is not completely up to 6,000 as it should have been, but only a bit less. So that's another part you can actually have uh, issues with. Either your belts are empty or your pipes are empty. That could be coal is empty for some reason. You've shut down the shut it off at some point maybe disconnected it maybe uh, something else maybe you're or if it's empty maybe you're leaching some of the coal off to somewhere else and it gradually starves and then your your power plant sort of dies eventually or it could be the same for pipes or it could also be yeah the pipes the water is, uh, is drained we're not getting water enough in in here that's the the problem in my case one of the likely issues is that i am using this location up here for water supply and that location has the issue in the current version of the experimental branch which hopefully will be fixed soon uh, the other thing is that it can also be jammed pipes if you are for example uh, making a fuel power plant as we have down here then uh, belts can also be jammed and therefore block other things if for example we are unable to get rid of um, 
No, it's further down. Uh, this could also be uh, an issue. For example, the package water. If we can't get rid of this, it might be uh, stalling. So then we can get get issues here. For example, if this one couldn't get rid of the, the, the package water because there was nowhere for it to go, and then it would sort of be stuck everywhere, and it wouldn't be having any, any uh, in place, then you can actually see exactly the same thing. This one is another a case here. If we can't get rid of the heavy oil residue because we're not consuming it then gradually it might look like it's working but gradually it'll fill up and when it fills up this is no longer producing and uh, we don't have any uh, any any production so that means either things are empty or things are full and that's the part we need to figure out the last reason that i can come up with that could be a case is that uh, you have simply disconnected things uh, maybe you've been doing some infrastructure and uh, by just uh, by, by careless deconstruction here, you accidentally deconstruct a wire and thereby, thereby separate, separating the grid. Pretty easy to see. If these numbers don't match what you're expecting, then that means you must have cut, cut the power somewhere. So those are the three uh, reasons. Let's look at the complication of why we can't just flip the switch like this and why that will not work. Because it'll spike up here. Now we are over here by the crystal oscillator build and uh, I want to illustrate one of the points that I, uh, I'm going to make on why it's almost never possible to just flip the switch and get it back online. So this part here, we have a lot of manufacturers, each of those consuming 55 megawatts per, yeah, not megawatts per anything, just megawatt because that's joule per second and they will get stuff inbound. Now, if we have this in a normal uh, on normal operation, then this belt out here for the reinforced iron plate is not going to be full. And maybe not all of these are working at full speed. Maybe uh, there are 12 of these, six here and six in the hall next to, next to us. Uh, and maybe they're not always working all the time because of uh, inputs. That means they, uh, the last two here, maybe they're working only 50% of the time. And that means Instead of using 50 mega, 55 megawatts each, they are only using like half of it because they're only active half the time. But as the power, the base shuts down, belts continue to flow. And that means things continue to flow in here. And that means when I flip the switch, every single building will have whatever was in the belt on the way there already going. I can even show you in a different way by a new build that we built uh, between sessions. So this is such a small build that is not even worth making a design for. This is the computer build that we built here. This is for uh, a computer build using circuits and crystal, crystal oscillators. And you can see because the belt up here, which contains some crystal oscillators, not a lot, but few, comes in here. And that means every single one of these is now has a stockpile. I hope this one also has a bit of stockpile. Yeah, just enough to get it going for at least one more crystal oscillator. That means this one, which normally wouldn't be active all the time, is now going to be active. And that means it's just a little bit more power that when I hit this, it spikes up and dies down immediately. So we need to do something. Now that we have identified the cause, whatever the cause may be, we need to uh, fix the issue and uh, get it back online. Well, the fixing the issue is kind of the easiest, easiest thing, because if you disconnected something, connect it again, and then we're here. But the issue is getting it back online, because I'm going to be, if you're really lucky, you just turn around, flip the switch, and then you're back online. But that's not how it works most of the time. So let's look at a more uh, dire example like this we have here. We have our coal power plant over on this side and we have the coal belt that's supposed to be coming in here that has uh, completely emptied. All the pipes are empty as well. So there's no water, no coal. We can, I don't know why they have uh, plumes to smoke, but they do, but um, they're not producing anything. And I need to get this back online. So no matter how many times I just flip the switch, it's not gonna happen. So let's uh, let's start with, um, with the first thing. Well, if we could get the coal power back online, and we could get the whole coal power plant, the whole fuel power plant back online, it still wouldn't work because we're consuming too much. So the first thing we need to do is take some things that use a lot of power and disconnect them from the network. Depending upon how your network looks, you may have it easy and just connect, uh, disconnect some random off uh, location, but I have some other things. I want to disconnect my awesome sinks. They can use over with only 30 power each, that's not much. But what it also means is that anything coming into this will no longer have a 
consumption. So this will backlog the way I'm building it here. This will backlog. And then now all of the factories will stop producing because they can't get rid of it. Uh, and they're always in a state of sort of constant uh, buildup. Uh, there's another big thing over on this side. This is my box crafting area. I have a video on box crafting and I would recommend it. This is a great way to build things that you just need some few of, such as for unlocking the space elevator. If you do that, then uh, it's very easy to just, just smash in some some chargers here, some power shots, and they will be up to 65 for one of these. And it gets really grueling when we look at this part. If we go all the way up, uh, don't I have it on this one? Or have I disconnected? Oh, I have disconnected. But if we choose to do like this, then it consumes not 55 megawatt, but 238 megawatt of power. And that is a bit excessive if you want to get the back biggest back online. So this is where one of my uh, one of the things that I never use, but uh, I think that it's coming in handy. If you have the power switch, you could, for example, build a little power switch here and say, well, now I want to be able to control this and we'll call it box crafting. And we take the switch is off there. So now this is disconnected from the network. So even if we start it up, all of these will not start up again. Very convenient. So take off awesome things, take off those uh, big things, box crafting, the things that are over manufacturers that are overcharged. Definitely a bad idea to keep those going. And anything else, of course, if you have some remote base that you can easily just disconnect, then that is an option. So now we have we have lowered the demand below what we can produce if the whole thing was online. So what we need to do is get the whole thing online again. But again, it doesn't work because we don't have water, because we don't have coal. So what we need to do is, again, isolate the network. I have built over here. We have built a setup for some biomass burners. They are not connected to anything. They are on its own little separate network. They're not doing anything at all. But I could, for example, this is, and this is a, a health and safety. What well, this just shows how much I care about safety. Since I decide to build a power switch when I am knee deep in water, that is just good practice when it comes to uh, to electrical safety. And that could then be. So what I'm doing now is basically saying, this little thing here could be now be switched onto the network, but that's not really gonna help a lot, is it? Because then they'll just be going into the network and probably crashing as well. Uh, this will be called biomass burner. There, and it's still off. So we're gonna build one more as well. I know this is not like the best place, but sometimes you gotta build it where you can. And I will be building it here. And that goes back into the rest of the network. And then I disconnect the direct line. So now the connection between the pumps, the water pumps, and the network here is controlled through this one. I'll call this water. Water. Whether it's connected or not. There. And I will leave this switched off. And if I switch this on, See what happens. Hopefully it works. And we should have now have a collective network here. This is producing. Ah, right. Here's a here's the catch. Because even though I have made it connected, then all of the ingredients here are disconnected. So if I try to switch this on. Now since this is one network, it'll be switched on. So if you have a live network and a turned off network and you connect them, then it will by default turn everything off and you have to manually switch it on. It's something that just to keep in mind, it doesn't mean that it's crashing. It just means that it's working. Uh, it's just defaulting to turned off, which I think is a sensible thing. So we now have, what we now have is we've now re-enabled our water because we need to get our, and uh, we can also re-enable the last part here. So what we need is we need to make sure that our coal power plant is working again. So what I do here is I start feeding all of these with water and I use this part here. Just a lot of biomass burners. They are eventually going to run out, but uh, for now they will get us started on this. But that's not the only thing. We also need to do the same thing for coal because then we have coal and we have water pumping into that location. So let's do that as well. 
We are now over here by the coal power plant, and uh, what you need to be aware of as well is that uh, biters will, uh, or yeah, biters will respawn because there's no power here. So um, be prepared for that as well. Now we have power from for this location coming in at only one location, and that is uh, up here. Yep, I'm not gonna be caring about this. Uh, we do have that line. So one of okay, maybe I do have to care a bit about them. Again, I'll use the power switch as uh, our means for controlling this. And I'll be taking it here. This is our supply coming in and here. So this is now turned off by default. Why do we separate this out? This is now its own little uh, little location. We need to power this one up. And uh, even though these are, let's have a look. They are scaled up because of this one. They are using 36 megawatt of power. It's not that much actually. But what we do have nearby is we actually have a vent nearby. So if we look at the vent, it should be right there. There we go. We have uh, some there. So we can just use that as another alternative. Instead of biomass burners, we can use these as a, as a supply for power. So let's do that. My favorite sound in the game. Du -du 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 -du. Perfect, perfect. So we will hook these up. And yes, of course, if you don't have them, then that's not an option. Then you deal with the biomass burners. But this is an alternative as well. Even though they fluctuate, then whatever they fluctuate around between 1 and 300, even 100 is enough for this. So if I switch these on, this one will be generating around 200 between 1 and 300. That's fine. And that will be enough to see. You can see it's not feeding up everything. It's only supposed to be to be producing enough just to uh, to max consumption 87 because that is what we've hooked up from our miners. So the miners will be ready and uh, they'll be online now. Our coal miner is now working as we can see here. Happily producing 240. That's a full maxed out belt. And we can use this opportunity to now say uh, we can now follow this belt all the way back to the base. We now have the two things we need in order to get our coal power back online. We have water and we have uh, our coal coming in. It's of course going to take a bit of time to get all the way in, but it will get all the way in here in uh, into our base. So we'll follow it up there, but we're not done yet because uh, even if we have our coal power operational, that doesn't mean that we have everything else available. So let's uh, go over to the coal power and isolate it from the network. So as you can see, we have coal coming into our base. That is excellent. And uh, all we need now is uh, this is the only connection between the coal power and the rest of the network. I have checked. So again, we're going to go back with one of these. And they will connect like that. And this will be left off. I will give it a coal power. power. So now the coal power is not connected to the network. That means if I go to this one, it will have water and coal and no more consumers. So let's keep our fingers crossed and see if I did it correctly. It looks like it's correct. I have a capacity, a production of 2,400 megawatts, and our only consumption is uh, the hyper tube that we have down here that will actually, oh, that's not here. Uh, there was a hyper tube that will take us safely back to our hub, which is really nice, but it's a one way, can't go back. So why did we do this? Well, this is the only consumer on the network. There, 10 megawatt, that's you. Right, so why did I do that? Well, now we have 2,400 power available. That is going to help us kickstart the rest. How is that going to work? Well, we are going to take the power that we are now producing and we are going to put it into some batteries. And you can use your existing battery pack if you have it nearby, but uh, mine is not nearby, so I'm just gonna make a new battery pack over here. So now we have two, 20 of these, that means I can consume 200 uh, or two 
Ah, uh, two megawatts of power. Uh, this is the one we need to look for. This one, uh, we can do 2000 megawatts of power. That's excellent. Uh, I can produce, if I had 24, then I could consume all of it. But at this point, we are just storing power and it's gonna take one hour to get the whole thing filled up. Not a problem. We don't need a full hour. But what we have now is we have now, when we switch the whole thing on, we have 2400 plus this can actually discharge. Even though it can't discharge for a long time, then it can discharge for just a bit of time. And that's all we need in order to get the rest of the base up and running. So how would we do this in, get, in order to get the rest of the base up and running? Well, uh, we, have a, we have a isolated network for water up here. We have an isolated network for coal over there. We'll need to connect those when the whole thing is working again. But until then, the, what we need to do is we need to kickstart our fuel, fuel power plant and that needs that needs us to pour energy into that network in order for us to uh, get the production up and running for that. Now we're here by the fuel power plant, None, nothing in the pipes and uh, we do have other things here and there. Everything else is ready, but we don't have any fuel in the pipes and that needs to be kickstarted so we can get that operational. So we need to go back up and uh, find that switch that connects the coal power to the rest of the network and once we have that flipped, then we should be able to get everything online if we have stored enough power just to get it online. It doesn't need a lot, but it just needs to get some production of fuel inbound. And if we have that production of fuel, then the fuel will then start uh, being turned into power and that will sort of help itself move on. Oh, that's not here. It was actually down here. We had that connection and then we are ready. Let's flip the switch and connect the coal to the rest of the network. Now, obviously, it shut off. Why did it shut off? It shuts off because one of the networks was offline, the other one was online. So it'll make sure that they have the same state and they default to, to turned off state. So flip the switch and we see the whole thing is operational and we are now consuming power here. We're actually not consuming so much because we've taken some things out and we are now producing 6,000. There was just a bit of fuel available there. If we go down and look at our fuel production, that should be coming online. You can see all of these are green and we are now getting a fuel production going in out here. Unbarreling of fuel and this pipe here. Yep, it's already filling up. So as this is filling up, going over here, let's see how the pressure on this one. It's pumping at 150, so it's not maxed out yet, but it'll get there. It will get there. This will get up to about two, uh, about 300. Yeah, it should be 300. We're getting out here. Almost 300 at least. And we will now see more of these power plants up here being online. Down here, looks good. They are online. And all the way up here, they are online as well. Some of them are sort of switching on and off, but that uh, should be good. They are, they're coming online. And what do we have here? Well, everything that comes in, is going to be uh, consumed. So you can see here it comes in and then it just gets consumed. This is the valve to make sure. That's actually really interesting. It's not, oh, there we go. Now something is coming in, good. Which will then be consumed as it uh, flows here. So what we've now done is we have gotten everything sorted. What we need to do is of course, take the water and hook it up to the rest of the network. We need to take the coal and hook it up to the next rest of the network. But there are also uh, other things that we should do as well. Now that we have all of the, oops, uh, all of this operational, let's go to a to a place where we can uh, go back to the hub because the hub is where we need to consider what. No, actually, it's not. Um, it is actually over here because what do you need to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? Well, obviously, and I I, I say this obviously, but I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna forget it as well build more power and the easiest thing at this point because maybe you don't want to or if you're thinking about okay then i need to do diluted fuel or turbo fuel or anything like that that's going to use massive amount of power in order to get power so i think that the best solution to that is oh no i've i did not have any rubber here as i was saying the best option is probably to get more of these geothermal because uh, you have a 18 of these geothermals located on the map in predominantly in the northern part of the map and uh, if you tap all of them you will get an average of 4500 megawatts of power so once you get that 
then you have bought yourself enough time to build a turbo motor or turbo fuel power tower or a diluted blend blender diluted power plant or maybe even a nuclear power plant in any case this uh, this will get you stable in order to uh, move on and then maybe you'll have to uh, to disable a factory here and there until you, uh, you you've built your power plant but remember to build the power plant that is pretty uh, pretty obvious uh, if you don't have enough of this you can use your tickets to buy some supercomputers or you can uh, you can craft some supercomputers in a box in any case uh, this is now we have now restored our base to fully operational uh, state i think this was a good sort of explanation of some of the quirks that uh, that are there uh, when in order to sort of divide and conquer split up the network get different things working are you kidding me all right, I'm going to end this on here. I'm going to start over. I wish there was a guide on YouTube that would uh, explain how this one is supposed to work. Until next time, take care and stay effective.